Central banks need to deliver price stability, but governments now need to implement carbon taxes. So what will the effect of policies designed to mitigate climate change be on inflation and output? New research using data from three decades of carbon taxes in Canada and Europe provides an answer. Beatrice, hello. Hi, Tim. Now, this paper is based on the idea that carbon taxes might cause inflation or even stagflation. Who's worrying about this? Uh, what's, their, what's their thinking? How do they get to this idea? I would say almost everybody is worried about this, um, especially on financial markets. In the last uh, few months, uh, this has become one of the staples to say, oh, we have uh, very high inflation at the moment and there are all these one-time effects. And, and now we are also getting a green transition and carbon taxes, and that's all going to make things much, much worse. And... Um, so, for instance, the CEO of BlackRock at one stage, you know, said uh, fighting climate change is going to cause huge inflation. That became the headline of, uh, of his uh, intervention. Um, so the worry is clearly there. And, um, and, and, and in terms of theory, it's not so clear uh, what is the theory. I think what people have in mind is supply shocks. And we know, of course, there have been supply shocks, famous supply shocks in the, in the form of commodities and oil, most prominently. And somehow the analogy between um, carbon taxes and uh, as supply shocks and oil price shocks uh, is, I think, what is partly in people's minds. So they're basing this on their memories of uh, like the oil price shock in the 1970s, that sort of thing. 70s type stagflation, high oil prices and years of then uh, low growth and high inflation is certainly one of the of the things that are scare, scary. But then you have to, you know, once you start thinking about it a bit more in detail, um, there are many taxes and uh, we know that taxes do not necessarily uh, taxes do not always uh, translate one to one into consumer prices. So there is the so-called tax incidence, and there is also the question how taxes therefore are being shared in their burden between the producers and the consumers. There is the fact that you are pricing something quite specific, namely carbon. And uh, this will change, needs to change relative prices. That's, the, that's exactly why you're doing it in a Pigouvian tax sense. But uh, what happens to the other prices? That's not so clear. Um, so once you start thinking about it, it's not so clear what the effect of carbon taxes on inflation uh, uh, will be or, or has been, in fact. So as an economist, you did an empirical study based on the impact of carbon taxes so far. Which carbon taxes did you look at? We looked at all the carbon taxes that have been implemented in uh, two jurisdictions that have been pretty active in this, uh, in this space, namely Canada and Europe. And also benefiting from the fact that there is a famous study by Metcalf and Stock that looked at carbon pricing in Europe with their impact on GDP. So people have been worried about the impact on output, uh, but not so much on prices so far. So we, we looked at, uh, at some 19 carbon tax uh, implementations over the last uh, 30 years. But to do this, then you need a, a, a counterfactual. You need a region that's similar but didn't have a carbon tax imposed on it. Where do you find that? Yes, of course. You know, as always, we need to be able to identify the, uh, as, as well as possible, to identify the, uh, the 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 effect of the tax versus other. And we use um, in different studies different methodologies. But in this one here, we looked at a. Uh, counterfactual, which is a synthetic control. Basically, what you do is you uh, construct a synthetic twin, something that does not exist. It's not an actual region. It's a composite of, uh, of other regions that closely mirror the um, evolution of the prices, because we are interested in different price indices, up to the moment that the tax is implemented. And then afterwards, you look how this how this synthetic imaginative uh, twin uh, behaves uh, relative to the one that actually implements the tax. So that's one approach. The other one is we also did local projections in order to control for other confounding factors. And therefore, you get, a, uh, you get a, a, an approach 
to uh, identifying actually the effect of the carbon tax. So for Canada over what is decades now, what has been the impact of carbon taxes on inflation? Well, we looked at uh, three carbon taxes in Canada. The most famous one is the one in British Columbia. It's also the one that was most studied. There are quite a number of studies that really have focused on British Columbia um, because they did it. They did it well. It was a well-designed carbon tax. It was also a significant one from the beginning. Um, and what we find, but people did again, you know, did not look so much at the price impacts. And what we're finding for Canada, for British Columbia, but by the way, also for the broader sample of uh, countries, was something surprising, that we tend to find not inflation but deflationary. Um, slight deflationary effects of the carbon taxes. And does it have a, a similar effect on income? Well, the question then was why, because this was not what we expected. We did think, you know, it will be inflationary. We just didn't know how much. The finding of a deflationary effect was, uh, was uh, surprising. And so if we first started looking at the composition of the different price indices. And, in, and when one possibility would have been that, in fact, energy prices don't actually increase. You put these taxes on, but it's all absorbed in producer prices. That's not the case. Energy prices do increase and emissions do decrease, by the way, which is one of the reasons why, for instance, the, uh, the, the um, British Columbia tax was con is considered to be successful. So it actually achieves the, the ultimate goal of reducing emissions. But what you did also see is that non-energy prices, most of them non-tradable, decreased uh, significantly and even overcompensated the increase in energy prices, which is why you get this slight deflationary impact uh, on, the, on the average uh, of consumer prices. So, that's a, so, so then you wonder, wow, okay, why? <laughs> why is this? Is this just happening? And so at that stage, we for, for British Columbia, we also looked at incomes, household incomes, and they, they do actually also decline. And um, so that could be you know, an income effect, which is causing, or is basically pushing other prices down. Remember that uh, British Columbia and other, most of the other jurisdictions we're looking at do not have monetary policy. So monetary policy is not responding. Um, so uh, one way of interpreting is, is that monetary policy was too tight um, as a in 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 non response to such a such a tax, and this pushed down um, uh, incomes and uh, and the other non energy prices. However, this is not something that we have explored in much detail so far. So at that stage, this is conjectural. One thing that people also worry about with carbon pricing is the distributional effect. Were you able to work out whether this affected uh, rich or poor the most? Again, we, we did take a, a first cut at this uh, in the case of British Columbia, where we had very good data and uh, again found a somewhat puzzling result. Um, you know, when you come from the yellow vest of uh, fear, uh, then you are thinking that the carbon price distributional effects would mostly be impinging on the uh, on the poorer rural um, uh, people who uh, you know who then demonstrate in the streets and say that uh, this this is something that is onerous uh, for them. Um, you have to know that most of or many of these taxes are being recycled somehow redistributed uh, into the population and in particular the British Columbia one has a strong it, it was been changed over time several times adjusted but it has been um, uh, it, it has been uh, mostly geared towards uh, the lower income households and in fact what we're finding when we look at the uh, at, at the uh, income uh, uh, when we look at the distributional effects, it seems that it's the rich that were most affected uh, by the carbon taxes rather than the poor in this case. You also looked at Europe in this research. There's many carbon taxes in Europe now, some recent, some not, some high, some low. Broadly speaking, did you find similar effects? Broadly speaking, yes. Uh, when we restrict, however, the sample to the euro area, then we did find uh, a, a short-lived uh, positive effect on inflation. It's rather short-lived, one, two years. And uh, But when we look at a broader sample of European countries, so, you know, Switzerland is one of the countries It's not in the euro area, but is in the European sample, um, then we have again this uh, slight uh, slight tendency for a deflationary effect. A 
I think the takeaway, I mean, we're not pushing the deflation story too much. It, the, the takeaway really from this, uh, from this historical analysis is that um, it's not so clear that you get that you have to get high inflation because the relative that relative prices have to change that's clear but what happens to the overall price level will depend on what other prices do and this in turn will depend on monetary policy so the monetary policy aspect is very important which by the way uh, we looked at in another study where we could simulate different monetary policy responses uh, to uh, carbon taxes so the message for a monetary policy maker is that uh, there is an effect that monetary policy does have to deal with but this isn't necessarily inflationary message for monetary policy makers monetary policy matters a lot in how you deal with these kind of supply side um, effects uh, you can you can create deflation or inflation and by the way in all of these simulations um, looking forward, you do get also a negative output effect. So it's hard to um, to, to impose these kind of uh, you know serious uh, climate policies without also getting a, a negative output effect, at least in the um, in the short run, but also in the longer run. So um, there is a cost to to uh, I mean an output cost. Of course, we're doing it for, for for very good reasons, but there is an output cost, and those those uh, things also matter for, of course, you know, when you're looking at monetary policy rules, inflation and output. Beatrice, thank you very much. <laughs> thank you very much, Tim. There's more detail in the paper. It is DP one six three nine six of the CEPR. It is called Carbon Taxation and Inflation evidence from the European and Canadian experience and the authors are Maximilian Konrad and Beatrice Veda Di Mauro. Well thanks for watching and we'll see you soon.